Okay, so today, actually for the next few videos, it's going to be all about a Kmart album hack. I discovered these albums at um, Kmart and they're $4.50 each, which I thought was really good. It would cost me more just in materials to make something like this from scratch. So it comes in black, white and craft. The only one that actually had the paperweight was the black, but to me they all feel the same. So I'm going to go with the assumption that they are all 180 GSM and they're 8x8. But in saying that they're 8x8, they're not true 8x8. They are 8 that way but seven and three quarters that way because we have the binding here. So they all come with a ribbon tie and the black is black throughout as is the white and the craft. They are white and craft throughout. The um, binding is with a, a cinch wire binding and it seems to be pretty sturdy. It's about three quarters of an inch binding. They come with 40 pages. Um, now, with this size binding, I would not actually make this into a 40 page album. The binding won't sustain it. It'll end, you'll end up having an album that sits sort of like that, rather than sits closed. So, what I have decided to do, and we're doing this for the first time together, I thought that would be the easiest way. I'm not going to use the black or the white today, I'm going to use the craft. Now, being 180 GSM, I actually prefer my albums to be on roughly 300 GSM as the base page. And then, of course, we decorate the pages with pattern paper or just a normal solid colour paper. So what I'm planning to do is join two pages together. So it makes a stronger page. And I thought that would also help when the pages keep getting turned. They're not going to start getting ripped down here. If we have two pages together, it makes it stronger. And also with that, because we're doing two pages together, if you've ever done album making before, you can then make this into what they call a pocket page. So you can have an opening at the top or an opening at the side where you can actually then slot more things in there, whether it be um, photos, um, it can be just like a, what I'll be showing you today is how to put a solid sheet in there so you can pull it out and there's more photos or journaling and such on that. So I will be going through that with you as well. I am keeping this album basic. I want to start with basic and then step up. So I'll be showing you the different albums and different ways to actually do things that we normally would use when we traditionally make an album from scratch. But here the base is pretty done for us. Um, now, as far as what kind of album I'm going to show today, again, it's a little bit of um, not a true album. I am going to be making a Christmas album that holds our family's favourite Christmas recipes in there. So it'll be a dual purpose. I will eventually have Christmas photos in here of all Christmases past and, and future, uh, favourite Christmas memories is what I'll be putting in there, but I'll be having a removable recipe card, hopefully on each page, if not every couple of pages. And I write my recipes out on index cards, because I have an index folder in the kitchen where I keep my recipes. So that's the method I'll be using, but if you have all of your recipes on the computer, um, print them out and then you can pop them on the pages. It's completely up to you. That's the really good thing about albums. It is your choice, your decision as to what goes in there and how it goes in there. So I'm only showing you a version of what I think will work for a recipe album. So the first thing I've done is to lessen the bulk. I've taken out 10 pages. I will probably take out more as we go along, but I'm starting with 10. And what I've done up to date is I have trimmed off the, the ratty edge that you get when you pull them out of the binder. So I'll continue, I've just got two more of those to do. And I thought I'd share with you what paper I'm using. Now, if you followed my videos, you'll recognize this pad. It was last year's Crafter's Choice Christmas pad edition that our Spotlight has. This year they have a different one. It's not my style. So unfortunately I am showing you with an old paper pad, but you can use anything, anything that you have. Like this may not even be available in other countries. Um, you may be able to get it on Etsy or something like that. So this is a really, really versatile paper pad. I've made gift cards with it, normal cards, and now an album. And what I love about it is it actually comes with heaps of pages of uh, pre-cut little dies. You can just pull them out and like so, and just use them as decoration on your cards and whatnot. So we've got quite a few of those. There's two versions. There's, I'll show you a proper page. There we go. So that's that page. Actually, that's a different one again. <laughs> I must have used up most of those. So you've got gnomes, and then we have Christmas trees. We've got stockings and whatnot. And we're still going. Oh, that's where this one lived. And that one is that one there. And I've also got little um, tags, banners, strips, little circles. And it's still going. 
I'll just go to a fresh page on that one, or I use them all up? I'll use most of them up. We also have a page of, uh, let me measure them, two and a half by three and maybe five eighths. A little, um, oh, I can't think of the name of them, just little uh, rectangle die cuts. And then we get into the papers. So I'll just put that back in the front before I go through the papers with you. And my apologies if you can hear everything that's going on in my household at the moment. This is why I normally do voiceovers, because most of the rest of the family work from home. <laughs> so it gets noisy. So we have all over pattern. And on the back, it's a nice solid, solid colour. And it's, it's actually a really pretty colour. It's like a blush. We've got some gnomes, and there's also a little decoration at the top. The back of that is like a sage green. Then we have lovely green florals, packed with a forest sort of green. They do repeat, just as I've used some of them already. This one is just a nice, uh, pretty much blank piece, but you've got the four corner elements that we can use, and that's backed on a slightly darker blush colour. And then we've got some all over sleds with the nice sage. Have I done these ones? Maybe I have. Not sure if I'm showing you that one yet. Can't remember. Memory like a sieve. Christmas trees with gifts, and that's got a pink poinsettias on a nice sage again. So that's all of that. These are the scraps I've had from other projects. And this is a good look at the different colours that we have in the pad. Although I am missing the dark green one there. Where's that one? I don't know. There's also that darker forest green in there as well. Now, so I don't use up too much of the pattern paper because, of course, that's got the pattern on the other side and I want to use these ones. I have just dug into my stash and I found these. So this colour here is from Officeworks, from the Quill brand, and I thought it would match up really well with pretty much everything. It's a nice bold colour. So there's that one that I'll be using. I'll also be using oh, this one. This is uh, from Spotlight. It's Frenchville. You can probably get this at like Michael's or something if you're in the US. Uh, it's 176 GSM, but it comes in such an array of colours. So I can use the deep one there, I can use the cherry red, I can use... I don't think the greens were quite what I wanted. No, that green wasn't quite what I wanted, so it was mainly the reds in that one. And then for the greens, I've got paper from Kayser Craft. And this one is called Dewdrop. Sorry about that noise, that's terrible. Really going to get rid of the offender. And also thyme, as in the herb thyme. So they're the base colours that I'll be using, and then I will be using the pattern paper as accents on the pages. So we'll just move all that aside for now because that we don't use until after we've pretty much made a lot of the album. So I'll move all that, hopefully, one will slide back on me. So I've just got two more. Oops, got bits of paper everywhere. Two more bits that I've got to trim down. So I'm just trimming them down to seven and a half. That gets rid of the yucky bit. One more. You can use any paper cutter that you have, guillotines, uh, paper trimmers like this one. Okay. So that's done. Put that there for now. So, as far as planning the album, um, we'll just do it as we go, I think. So I'm just deciding if I need to cover the front and back with a piece of this first, so we have the same colour in the background, or if pattern paper will suffice. I'm not sure, so I'm going to leave that to last. So in the meantime, what I might do is score some of these at half an inch. The reason being, I want to make little um, flap pages. And to do that, we have a half inch um, flap, which gets glued down. So I'm just make sure I've got my paper orientation right. So I'm just gonna go to half an inch, which is on this side, but it's actually easier for me to score from this side. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to score at seven and a half, so I'm gonna score at seven, which gives me my half inch. And that's a much easier line for me to score on that side. So I'll do this 
for a few to get me started. Oops, okay. Make sure you stay in the track. Craft card I find is a little bit trickier sometimes to work with because even though it is the same GSM, it actually feels thicker and it is harder for the paper fibers to do what you want them to do. So if anything is going to crack, it'll be the craft card. But we can disguise all that sort of thing so don't worry about it. Um, how many have I done? One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to leave it at that for the minute. And I'm going to burnish, fold back and burn it. Oh, actually, I'll do it now. No, I won't do it yet. I need to decide what I'm going to do here. Right, so this first page, I think I want a... So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do a flap straight up. And I want the flap to come from... I think I might do a top and bottom flap. And then I can have the side here as a pocket. Yes, so I'm just going to grab my scoreboard back. And the ones we've done so far, we've scored at seven on the seven and a half side. I'm going to rotate it and score on the seven and a half on the eight inch side. And this will enable us to have the top flap that is the same width as the page. So I'm going to pop those ones just there for the minute. I'll leave that one there. Now also for the, because I want a side pocket here, I actually don't want it to go to the whole way of the page. I want the little, the bit that I'm going to be putting into the pocket, I want it to stick out a little bit so it's obvious that there is something in there. And I'm going to be creating a little pull tab as well. So what I'm going to do in order to use my guillotine, I'm going to fold the rest of the album away and just leave these, these two pages like so. And I am going to use a guillotine for this. This one should fit. Any size guillotine you have will, will be fine. And see how that's not going to get in the way now. So I'm going to trim off. I reckon an inch will be plenty. So... Actually, I'm going to use a different guillotine because that's actually, I can't see the inches on the other side. So what would be easier is having a trimmer that can go through both pages at once and has measurements on the side for me. So that's when this big beast comes into play. The other one I had before will also work. We need to do one page at a time. This one I can do two pages because it's, it's a big fella. So make sure we've got the holes aligned. Locked it, so unlock it, pop that through, and I have a one inch guideline on this side. There together, that's all good, that's all straight, and then just slice through. I picked this up oh, a long time ago on special at Spotlight. Quite often they'll come down to half price, and it's worth every penny. It cuts through everything effortlessly chipboard as well it's fantastic so open the album back out so you can see here that it is that much shorter than the rest of the pages there so this will be our pocket now before i make it into the pocket i want to glue our flaps in place so this one comes back out and this one is seven and a half and i want to have a flap on the top Do I want one at the bottom as well? But let's keep this page quite plain. So we'll just have it at the top, but I don't want it to go over this edge here. So we trimmed an inch off that one. So we'll need to trim an inch off of this one. Because it's a single sheet, I can just bring this one back through. It also has the inch mark there. And I'm going to trim. Well, let's start off with trimming the whole inch. See what we get. Yep, that's lovely. It misses all that, which is fine. And I don't want the flap going the whole way down. So remember the pages are eight long. So I'm going to trim this off at six. Six and a half, actually, because I lose that top half because it goes into the pocket. It'll make sense in a minute, trust me. So now what we do is we 
bend this back where the score line is. Now the score line, I've got the indented side here, we fold on the mountain side. So we fold back on itself. Just make sure that the edges line up, which they do. The other thing I'm going to do, because I don't want bulk, is I'm going to mitre those two corners. So now we have a flap with mitered edges. And what I'm going to do is I want to place it with these two pages, this page here. I'm going to pop the flap over the edge, like so. And it's going to get glued into there. And then this page will get glued to it there and down here. And then you'll have a pocket here. So I'll do that now. So what I'm going to do, you can use tape runner. Um, actually, I wouldn't use tape runner. I don't trust tape runner to be strong enough here. So what you can use is... You can use um, score tape, as in the original brand of score tape, a good double-sided tape, or for really strong needs, you go for your red line, or you can use glue. The two that I would recommend for albums is the Art Glitter Glue, which dries clear, and the Barely Art Glue. Both of those are fantastic. So what I'm going to use for this one is my Art Glitter Glue, and we're going to glue on the inside of that flap. So it folded like that. So we're gluing on that side. And just going to place over the single page, matching up that end there. And it'll just sort of like slip into place. And I'm going to turn that page over and give it a really good burnish. We want that to be really adhered down. So now what you have is a fold-up flap. So the next thing to do is to close oops, close this page and make this into the pocket. So to do that we need adhesive on the top side, the left hand side and the bottom and we're leaving the right hand side open. So you can either use glue or tape here. I am going to use glue because I don't want the sticky side of the tape making things get stuck. So what I'm going to do, just to make it easier to see where I'm going, I'm going to put white paper there so I can see the edge of my page as opposed to the pages underneath. So we're gluing. And you can go quite close to the edge there because we do want it to be strong. And then we're going to glue the bottom edge and the top edge, like so. And now we need to make sure that our little holes here are going to line up. like so, and the page lines up, and give it a really good burnish. Make sure there's no glue seeping out on that side. Give it a good burnish. And now we have a really nice pocket. Don't try to open the pocket though until it's dry. There we go. Squeezed all the excess glue out. There. So now the first page we have a top flap and a pocket page. Now also what I want to do is I want to create a pocket down here because my aim for this album is I want photos on the big spots and then the recipe cards I don't want to keep them in here. Um, oh, no that's not true, I want to keep them in here but when I cook I want to be able to take the recipe out so it doesn't, I don't get like food all over the rest of the album. So I'm going to be popping the recipe cards into pockets. Now we cut that one off there so how much have we got down here? We've got two inches. So my pocket needs to be, you can have a deep one if you want, but I want to keep this flap closed. So I'm going to make my pocket about one and three quarters, or almost two. I can do almost two. I might just go one and seven eighths maybe. So the pocket will finish here. And then when I put the recipe card in the pocket, it'll keep this flap nice and closed. So we go for the, it needs to be six and a half long. And I'm going to actually write that down. So it needs to be six and a half that way. And one and seven eighths that way. Doesn't matter that I'm writing on this because it's going to get covered up. It just gives me an idea of what I need for that page. So to create a pocket, we have to add half an inch to the two sides and half an inch to the bottom because we are going to be creating flaps that will get glued down. So what we do is we go into 
the pieces of paper that we haven't scored yet, and I'm going to create it out of one of those. So we need, so it'll be six and a half long, so we need to add half an inch, so it's six and three quarters and a half inch here, it'll be seven inches. So, no, that's not right. <laughs> Adding half an inch. So six and a half becomes seven, becomes seven and a half. So we need a piece that is seven and a half, which should be one of these all ready to go anyway. So that was the eight inch size. So we want the seven and a half inch side. So that's already the correct length. Now we need one and seven eighths. So we're going to turn it this way to cut. We want one and seven eighths plus half an inch. And I'm not used to working in inches all the time. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven eighths. So we've got half an inch on top of that would be one, two, three, four, two and three eighths, I think. But Ryan wants to play. You can hear him in the other, other room there. Now, just going to double check that. Yep, that looks good. I normally do prefer to use guillotines for this sort of GSM card because sometimes the paper trimmers can leave a little bit of furry edge, but that's okay because that's going to be the bit that I'm going to make into the flap. All right, so we need to go for half an inch. I'm going to go on this side because it is easier for my measuring skills on this side. So we're going to go half an inch down one long side, and then we're going to go half an inch on the two short sides. So that will be half there, and on this side it will be seven. Or you can just flip it around and do them both on that side there, whichever is easier. So we have a lot of bulk here now in the corners. As you can see, there's a bit of bulk. So I'm going to trim that off by going at a slight angle. So I haven't gone straight, I've gone at a slight angle. And I'm just on the corner of that score line. Looks like I need to get the eucalyptus oil on my scissors. They've got a bit of glue stuck on them. Okay. And then... We are going to fold and burnish those three sides. And you can see by going at the angle, we've created a nice mitered corner there. And I'm also going to mitre the two top edges as well. So we have a nice little pocket. And I'm just going to test before I put glue on there that that fits. And it does. So we can start gluing that all down. So I glue the bottom edge first. Whoops, Amy. Trying not to go on the front just yet. And I line that up. That's where it's going to have a bit of scrap underneath. I line it up so that it is flush on this side. And we want it to be right at the bottom of page and then we're going to give that a good burnish and then we can do the sides Oops. you can use tape glue whatever your preference is I find glue easier because it gives you that time if it isn't in the proper place straight away you can slide it a little bit there we go so that is in so we've got our first page with a flap so we've got plenty of photo spots, and then we're going to spot there for our recipe cards. Or if it's a travel album, travel tickets, um, you can put journaling cards down there. If you don't want to journal on these pages with your photos, pop journaling cards in there. Or spare photos. It's really simple like that. And we've got the pocket in there. Now I'll show you how to make the pocket page. So, let's see. This is actually a good size. That's the leftover bit from the pocket. Basically you want something that's going to be a little bit shorter than the top of the page because remember we've glued there and there. So what I would suggest is you, that's eight inches, I would go for something that's seven inches. So it's not going to interfere then with where you've glued, but down, down there and up there. So that isn't quite seven inches, seven and a half. So we'll just trim that down to seven. Always go through and use up you know, bits of paper first. Normally what I do is I plan a whole album intricately, do all the measurements, make sure I know how many bits of paper I'm using. This one I'm doing on the fly, just to show you that it can be done and you can still get a really nice result. Okay, so that's now seven inches along there. So this, if I can get my fingers in there, this fits really nicely 
I'm saying. The glue might still be a bit wet. That fits nicely in there. Now, because I am struggling a bit, I'm just going to take a wee bit more off. I might actually make it six and a half. So six and a half on my trimmer is where I've put that washer tape. So that should be a much nicer fit in there now. Yep, see, perfect. Now, I don't want it to get lost in there. So what you can do is you can either cut a notch in here, just use a circle punch. Um, pretty much everyone has got like a circle punch or something they're able to cut a circle with. So you can do that in there. Or you can put a ribbon tab on here. Or if you have a tab punch, you can put um, a proper tab on there. Now, the punches I have, I'm gonna go with the tab punch. Um, Ribbon is, is nice, but it's not going to work really well in the album that I'm actually doing today. It's beautiful in baby albums and wedding albums. Absolutely glorious because you put a really pretty ribbon. All you do is you cut a piece of ribbon that is about yay big, which is what? <laughs> Let me see. It is, go on the zero side, where am I? About three inches. Because then what's going to happen is it's going to get folded in half and you're going to glue those bits to the pull-out page, which is what I'm going to do with the tab anyway, so I will show you that. So I've got two tab punches. I've got the tab punch from, I think it's, yep, We Are Memory Keepers, and it punches, actually I've got one here, it punches a tab like that. So you can either cut out one or two. If you cut out one, it will go onto one of the sides of your pages. Like so, if you've got two, I, I prefer two because then I can go on both sides of the page and it creates a really strong tab. And then this bit gets covered up with your decorative paper or your photo mat. The other tab punch I have is this one, which is four in one. It's by Sullivan's, so it has the four punches in there. The only one of these that I really like for tabs is the circular one. So it cuts out a tab like that and then you fold it and then those two bits go on either side like so and that becomes your pull tab there so it's the same thing with the ribbon with the ribbon you would go glue it there and then not this big of course and then glue it there so you're gluing on both sides like so and then you put your decorative paper on top the only thing with ribbon is you'll need to find a really flat thin ribbon otherwise it's going to cause bulk the good thing with using uh, card stock is it's thin so I going to be a recipe book, Christmas recipe book. I'm trying to think what one would I like. I think I'm going to go, that's nice for nice albums, I'm going to go with this size one because I think it's more in keeping with the themes that I'm doing. So I need to use some craft card. Oh, I'm wondering if my offcuts are going to be the right size. It is perfect. So I only punch upside down like this so I can see exactly where the paper is. So I've got one. And I've got two. Easy, easy. I'm going to glue those to both sides of my uh, page insert. So just on the long bit. I'm going to go up the. I'm going to go just shy of being up at the top. So not quite at the top. Just straighten it up a bit. And now I'm going to put glue on this whole piece. I want it to stick oops, to the other one. Like so, just match up tab edges. And then you can then decorate the tab the same as what you're going to decorate this piece with by using the punch again and then just cutting off um, cutting off these tail bits. You just use the top bit there. So that's done. So when that goes into the page into the pocket, it goes in and you can keep that little bit out so people know, oh, there's something there, I'm going to pull that out. Okay, so that's that one. Now on the back of that page, I am thinking I might do, I've got the top flap there and I've already glued the page together. I probably should have thought about that before I glued the page together if I'm going to put anything on this side. I might do, ah, I know what I can do, I can, I can still do it, it would look pretty cool actually. Oh, I'll leave that in there. I'm going to do a side flap, so the ones that we've already pre-scored. I'm going to do a side flap here, but I'm going to create a bit of interest here. I'm not going to go the whole size of the page. I'm going to do a small one there and a small one here. <laughs> Bear with me. It'll be good, I promise. So the flap is going to be there and that 
is too long for the page because we cut this page down, remember? So I only want it to be at the most six and a half plus your half inch, so seven. But I actually don't want it to be that long. I want them to be um, smaller. So I'm only going for about a, I might go for a four and a half because then you can still fit the smaller three by four photos on there nicely. So I'm gonna go uh, four and a half plus the half inch. I'm gonna go for five inches. So I need to trim this down to five inches. So we've got a nice leftover piece there. And then I'm going to trim this down horizontally. If we've gone for a four inch photo that way, maybe how big is three and a half from, if I do the zero in, it's probably better. Okay, so if I go three and a half there and three and a half there, leaves quite a nice gap. So I'm going to do three and a half by one and three and a half by two. So we've got our two flaps there. So I'm going to fold back the corner, the, no, sorry, the um, scoring, folding it back on the mountain side and I'm going to clip off corner so it's mitered like so. Same thing with this one, bend it back onto the mountain side and trim the corners. And that one will go here. So this one we can tuck into, I'll take it out for a minute and put my paper underneath. We can tuck this one into that pocket that we created like so. And this one will be actually on the page. So when we open it up, this will be shown. But don't worry, because we are going to cover that with the decorative paper when we get to there. So I need to put glue on the inside of that flap. And we're just going to slot that into there. Uh, back a little bit further. And just sort of like pull it so that it's right on the edge. Like so. Give it a good burnish. Oh, no, I did. I did it on the front. I was wondering why that wasn't doing so, so great in there. Try that again. That's the good thing with glue. If you make a boo-boo. This time, because I think I just got the flat. Yep, there we go. That's better. Now I'm in the pocket. And just shimmy it into place. That feels better. There we go. And we'll just let that glue dry and we can get rid of that with our glue eraser if we need to, which is this little contraption. We may not need to, so we won't worry about that right this second. And this flap is going to go here. Just up a little bit from the bottom of the page, like that was up from down from the top. Now this one I'll show you how to do it with tape, just so that you have an idea. I like the score tape only because it comes in the three eighths width and the 3 8 width <coughs> excuse me, is perfect for our half inch score lines. You don't want a half inch tape because you will see part of the tape and you have to use the glue eraser all the time. So it's going to go like that so we need it on the outside of the flap this time and the good thing with score tape is that it tears really easily. So you can either tear it with your fingers or just grab a, a block and just rip. Super easy. Now we don't want any tape coming over the edge because then that will glue our flap closed, which is not what we want. So we have always burnish the tape, make sure it has a good strong hold, and then I can never get it off with my fingers. I just use a tool, you can use a pokey tool, edge of the scissors, whatever. So now we've got that, just make sure there is no tape hanging over the edge. And I'm going to hold it like so, so I have the straight edge and I've got the glued, the taped edge there. You only get one shot with tape. So you've got to make sure it's going down straight the first time. And I'm going really close to the wire binding to make it easier for me to put pattern paper on this page later. So we burnish that down really well. So now we have two flaps. So it's a lot, it's more interest in that page now. I'll come back and decide if I want to put a pocket there because I can still can fit a nice pocket in here or I can even fit a sideways pocket there. 
Okay, page two. We need to join these pages together. Do I want to make a pocket out of this one? I don't think so. I think because we've got the pocket in this first one and we trimmed this one down, I want to create this next page to be the full, the full width. So we've got the shorter page and then we're going to have a full width page. So I don't want to have a pocket, but do I want flaps? I've got a top flap, those flaps. I think I might go for a side flap and a pocket to keep that flap closed. Yes. So I need, yep, that was one of the side ones. So it was already pre-scored. So I don't want it going the whole length. I want a pocket in there. And how big was this pocket? I think it was. It was that funny amount, wasn't it? So maybe... It's going to go around. The pocket will sort of start there. Maybe I want the pocket... I might go for a deeper pocket because it's holding recipe cards. I might go for a two inch... Or two and a half. I might go for a... No, I'll go for a two inch pocket. So we need to cut at two and a half inches wide. How big is that one? Ah, two and a half inches. See, always check your scraps. But it's not going to be long enough there because normally we would have another half inch on each side. Which we're not going to have the capability of having the half inch on each side because these pages um, are predetermined in size. So we can, what I'm going to do then is just glue those two bits down. Yeah, I think I shall do that. So I'll just score a long end. I've got a two and a half piece. I need a half inch score. So I'm just going to score it at two because it's easier for me to score on the right hand side than the left. So this is a different kind of pocket we're going to be doing. You fold back on the mountain side. And I'm going to mitre those two flaps. Like so. so this one, we're going to have it, so it's going to be able to have bulk because we've got the flap, but I'm going to be gluing down the two sides here. So it's a little bit different to what we've already done. But we're making the paper work for us. I don't want to bring in too much extra paper from my stash. I'm going to try and use what the album has supplied us with. So here I'm going to just draw my holes in line and looking top and bottom if it's in the right place. I'm going quite close to those holes and burnish that down and get rid of any excess glue and then we can quite happily glue the sides. I'm going probably almost half an inch with the glue. We do need this to be a strong bond so if you want to use tape by all means use tape. So I'm going to sort of push down and push in in a little bit as well to create a little bit of a bow. And we are going to have excess glue everywhere because I did put a nice amount down. That's okay. That's why we burnish. So now we have a nice strong pocket there. And this page I need to finish before the pocket. So, oops, try and lift it up. Put that on so it's easier to see. So we have five and a half inches. So I might go five and a quarter plus the half inch um, tab. So I've already forgotten what I said. Five and a quarter plus a half inch is five and three quarters. So this piece needs to be five and three quarters wide. So I've got the scored piece on this side because we don't want to cut that off. We want to keep that. I'm going to five and three quarters. So if I fold and burnish and just trim that flap corners like so and just sort of hook it around there for the moment. Yep, 
So that gives us a nice gap in there. So we're going to pop our recipe cards and keep this flap closed when we don't want it. And then we open it up. We've got nice lots of room there as well. So I'm going to keep it the same length as the page. So all I need to do is glue down the inside. Like so. I've got a single piece there, which is perfect. Just sort of butt it up against there so it won't go any further. Close it down, make sure we are even, top and bottom. And then you guessed it, give it a really good burnish. And that is our flap. So before I glue, see how sort of it, it sort of starts to hold its weight. That's why I decided to glue two pages together because that makes it a lot more sturdy. So I just need to decide before I glue it all closed what I want to do on this side. So, so far I have a bottom pocket and I've got a side pocket here. I'm going to go for a bottom pocket again. And I don't think any of my scrap pieces are big enough at the moment. So I'll go into one of my pieces I've cut, of the 10 that I had previously cut. So that's, that's that length there. So what I need to do is flip it, hopefully, and I will have, because I've got seven and a half, so ideally I need it to be eight and a half, which is not going to be, it's only going to be eight. So do I make a, a smaller pocket? Because I can't trim the page down now. I make a smaller pocket or do I go for another side pocket there so I can trim down this page or a side pocket here. I'll go for a side pocket there actually so I'll grab one of our pre-scored ones because that's the right thing. And we're going to do the same thing what we did here. So we're just going to have the half inch gusset there so that we've only got that little bit there. So the same thing. That's a nice width. What did I do for that one again? I did a two inch, so I need two and a half inches wide. So I'm making sure I've got the scored bit there. Cut down. Bend and burnish. Bit fold. Mine to the corners. So, I've got that bit left over, and that is going to go in there. So, again, I'm going to use glue, and I need to use glue on the outside. Making sure it all lines up, and I'm going again quite close to those holes. And Give it a good burnish, get rid of any glue that seeps out. Jolly good burnish there. Okay, now we can apply glue to the sides. The reason I'm doing glue on the sides here, I find that things can get stuck on the tape as well. So I'm pushing in just a little bit, just a fraction, so we get a bit of a curve there. And then I wanted to do, where are we? do another, but I'm not going to go the whole way this time. I'm only going to do it eight inches. I might do a six inch long. Like so. Score half an inch, so I'm sitting on five, so I'm going to score at four and a half. And mitre. Okay, and then that's going to sit there. So this one again I'm going to show you with tape. 
So we're doing it on the inside. Just going to rip that. Probably easier to put the tape on and then miter the corners. But I find I use more tape if I do that. I don't want to waste the tape because you're cutting off the tape all the time. Okay, now I'm only going to do that. So I'm only taking off part of the tape. And if I'm using like all tape in the albums, this is what I do. I'm just going to put glue on there so I do have a little bit of wriggle room if I need it. Okay, so I'm going to put... Doesn't matter to me if it's centered top or bottom. I really don't don't mind. I'm gonna close that. I don't want to. This is why I prefer glue. It's just easier. And then pull off the rest of the tape. I don't get it to sit as flush when I use tape for some reason. That's not sitting flush enough for me. But We'll go with it. You're not going to notice. Okay, and now we are fine to join those two pages together. Now I'm not creating a pocket page with this one. So I'm just going to glue. Need to make sure that we line up the holes and all of the edges. It's easier to open the flaps out to give it a really good vanish. We really don't want this to come open at all. We need all that glue to do its magic. Okay, so page one, and we've got the pull out, the flaps, the flap, which will get closed off there, a smaller flap. Right, next page. Here's one of our side ones. This page I want to make into a pocket again. So, first page, we cut, we cut off an inch. off an inch there. Um, okay, I'm going to fold this and burnish. If I can find my burnishing tool. And Do here. So I'll put that in there. So what widths do we have now? Seven. So if I do that, three and a half. So I'm going to score this along the seven and a half inch side. We've already got the half inch for the flap. So I want to go halfway between zero and seven, which is three and a half. And then 
fold that back. Make sure our sides are straight. And vanish. And what this is going to give us is when we open the flap, we can open it again. So you've got a double flap happening. But I don't want it to go the whole length of the page. And I think I need to trim just a smidge off there so that it closes properly. So literally a smidge. I'm trimming off that much. I'll leave that there for a second because that will fold properly. Now I might do is a three and a half so we can put a three by four photo if I make this four and a half. So I'll trim two four and a half and that will still give us photo opportunities for a three by four photo. So we'll put a photo there, photo there, photo there, photo there, photo there. Photo there. And then we have a smaller one still available, which is three and a half by three and a half. So that's still a good size. You can pop anything really on there. Do I want it to go there? Or save it for another page, because then I can put this towards the middle and have a pocket down there, which keeps that flap closed. I think I'll do that. My scraps aren't big enough. So my pocket needs to be six and a half, so I need to add half there and half there, so seven and a half wide. Uh, I need that one. And that's already seven and a half, so I want my pocket to be two inches tall, so add another half inch, two and a half inches. And we're going to score half inch on three sides. So seven and a half will be seven. Two and a half will score at two. And again at seven. Get rid of the bulk on the corners. And mitre. Fold and vanish. Okay. I'm going to see if I can be sneaky and hide do is I'm going to hide this. Actually it doesn't really matter because you're not going to see it anyway. So I'll just put it on top of the page like we did before. Otherwise you can pop the flap underneath. But being a pocket you're not going to see it anyway. So I don't want to cause any bulk happening. So fold them all in so you can see where you're putting it. You want it to go against this side of the page or close to it. Make sure it's all flush down the bottom and burnish and then we do the sides, like so. Oh, and I forgot to mention I am using a bone, or not bone, a Teflon for, um, burnisher, because um, it doesn't leave shiny marks on your paper. If you use the ones that you score with, um, they're plastic, so they could leave shiny marks on your cardstock. So this, I want to put, actually it's going to stay closed anyway, so I might pop that. Um, I'll do it at the top. Why not? I'll do it at the top. So I'm putting that inside the pocket page, so we have to glue on the inside flap. And I'm just going to unfold it for the moment, so I can really see what I'm doing. 
and lining the top edge and the side. Fold it down, give it a good finish, get rid of the excess glue, then that folds in and over like so. So that's that page done. And then going onto the back of that page, remember we are gluing them together so we need to get the next one like so. I might go for a little bit of my paper in between. I want to kind of use that one. That'd be quite nice from the top. Yeah, maybe I'll just do that. I'll do it from the top. I've got to trim off that bit, and we're gluing inside. And I'm just sort of going to go to what looks quite central. Burnish, and that's in place, like so. So we've got the side fold out, we've got the top fold out, and I need another pocket. That's the seven and a half, so that's the right width. The height I'm going to go with with this one. three inches with this one which means I need to trim it at three and a half and I need that half inch for the um, flap so again half inch on all sides we're seven and a half so we score at seven flip it around we are three and a half we're scoring at three seven and a half so And get rid of the bulk. And just put together the same way. Glue on the outside of the flap. Go against the side of the page and the bottom. Do a good burnish, and then the side flaps. Like so. Okay. Now I want to the two pages together but only around the three edges so get my paper under there so we're gluing the top edge it's the left hand side trying not to get glue everywhere and then on the bottom of the page making sure the holes line up and the two pages line up and a really good burnish on the glued areas. Get rid of the bits of glue that have managed to escape. Like so. So we have our nice those edges are really down well. So, I need to make another one of these, which was six and a half by five and a half. I don't 
don't have any left over at the moment, so I'll do it out of a new one. sure that's a nice fit, yes it is. There we go. So glue on the tab bit. I don't want it to interfere with everything, so I want the tab maybe to be down a bit further. Now glue this completely. into there. I'll throw the tab down a bit. There we go, there we can still see the tab there, we can still see the tab there. We are coming along. So I've got page one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can sort of see when I hold the album up, see how it starts to get a bit of bulk in there? And then you've still got to add your photos and everything. So that's why I'm pulled out some pages and I'll need to pull out some more but that's okay because we've got more to do I'm going to leave it there for part one and we'll come back for part two